I'm Rob Lucuri, a senior editor at Gold Derby here with Daniel Ranieri, who plays young JR in The Tender Bar. You know what, Daniel? This is like a fairy tale for me. When I look at what's happened to you, you're so young, and this is your first ever role in a film. And it's a film directed by George Clooney, starring Ben Affleck and a bunch of other amazing actors. Was it true that you were discovered in a viral YouTube video? Yes. My mom filmed me cursing about the lockdown and <laughs> she sent it to a couple of her friends and it went viral. A couple months later, she gets a call from Jimmy Kimmel's assistant because I was on a comedian's Instagram. She gets a call from Jimmy Kimmel's assistant saying that Jimmy Kimmel wanted me on his show that night. So me and my mom were getting ready. We got, went on the interview and then as soon as we got done with the interview, George Clooney's casting director, Rachel Tenner, called my mom and said that George wanted me in his next movie. And I was like, wait, I was just on Jimmy Kimmel. Now I might have the chance to be in a George Clooney movie. What is going on today? Like, I, it, was, it was great. I can't believe it. Like, it's such an amazing story. They should make a movie about this. Cause like, this never happens. Did, were you pinching yourself? Like, were you like, are you, are you telling me the truth? Like, is this real? <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was like, wait, am I in a dream? I was like shaking my head. I was like, am I in a dream? What's going on? Yeah. And what was your mom saying? Was she just like, she must have been thrilled. Yeah, she was shocked. She was so excited for me. She was so happy of me. And me and her loved that I got the chance to be in the, a movie with George Clooney and Ben Affleck. Absolutely. And, you know, for most people, their first few movies are small little independent films that, you know, perhaps maybe don't have a very large audience. You're going straight in to the tender bar with Ben Affleck starring George Clooney. So I'm wondering, with such little experience as an actor, can you take us back to your first day on set? What was that like? I was kind of nervous filming a movie with George Clooney and Ben Affleck. So I was kind of nervous. The first scene, I kind of ached a little bit. But after I got done with the first scene, I was like, oh, this is so easy. And for the rest of the two months filming, I wasn't nervous at all. We just filmed the scenes and I had a great time. I had so much fun with the actors and George and it was just amazing. And so, um was it, did you have very long hours or were they very conscious about giving how young you were to kind of make sure that you had a nice balance? We're conscious about it. I, I think I could only work like six or five hours, but um, I also had to juggle school and I had to do three hours of school a day. So that was pretty difficult doing that. Yeah. Were you, I mean, what was it like physically? Were you tired emotionally? Like what was the end of the day like for you? Would, you? would you just go straight to bed and just kind of conk out? Um, no, not really. I got a lot of energy, so I didn't really go straight to bed. I went on my phone a little bit. I had my Xbox with me, so I played Xbox. And then I finally went to bed because I knew I had to film the next. <laughs> it's so true. It's like, that's what happens with my son. I'm like, you need to go to bed, man. And he's like, I'm not tired. And then the next day I'm like, you have to get up. And he's like, oh, I'm tired. Like, well, if you had gone to bed early, you would have been fine. So I'm sure you're going through the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, this film, um, I didn't know much about J.R. Moringa, the, the, the man who wrote the memoir that this film's based on. Um, it recounts his life growing up on Long Island. Um, given that you play him as a young boy, um, I'm assuming you're a New Yorker. Um, are you Brooklyn born and bred? Yes. Yes, yeah. I thought so. I could, I could tell from your accent. Um, so did that play any part in how you were going to play JR and how you were inspired to kind of had it to, to make him feel real? I, it did because I had the kind of like the, uh, accent in the movie as JR Moringer. And also like, as George said, and you have to be yourself, you have to act like it's a conversation. Just be yourself. There's only one person of you. Just be yourself. Yeah, that really helps, you know, that's half the battle. If you can, if you just relax and be yourself, you know, 
then we feel like we can believe in the character. Um, I was actually wondering if you can think of a funny situation on set where, you know, who was the funniest co-star and can you tell us a funny story working with them? Uh, probably George Clooney. He was, he was such a prankster. He was so funny. And well, actually in one of the sets, in one of the scenes on set, me and him were like fake, uh, fake punching each other. And <laughs> boom, and he went, oh, like that. And we were fake, he punched me and it was, it was, it was great. That was, that was fun. Yeah, he, he seems like a really nice guy and that helps a lot. I also really enjoyed your uh, scenes with both Ben Affleck and Lily Ray. Lily Ray plays your mom, Ben Affleck plays your uncle. Um, what can you say about both of them that you most appreciated or most valued um, as co-stars and also as people that you felt comfortable with? Um, probably when uh, Lily Rob, uh, Lily Rob helped me a lot. One scene, we were, had to make peanut butter and jelly, and I messed up a couple times. She's like, what's the matter with you? You don't know how to make a peanut butter and jelly? Sandwich? And she was like, kind of helping me, and I was like, okay, thank you. And then Ben Affleck was just great. I loved him so much. And now I actually have his phone number, so me and him text each other. And on set, he was like a, a set dad, and he was just great. He helped me with a lot of stuff. Me and him had so much fun filming the scenes, even like emotional scenes. We had fun, and it was just great filming scenes with all the actors in the movie. Yeah, that's wonderful. It's so good that you've had such a positive experience. Um, so I'm also wondering, what was the key for you Apart from being yourself, because that's really important as at the beginning, but what else was key for you to get inside JR's head and understand who he was as a kid so that you could play him like in a real and believable way? Um, probably that I'm always at my grandfather's house. I eat dinner there. I'm always there. I'm always hanging out with them. And um, I'm always with my grandfather. I'm always with my grandma. And also kind of like the accent too, kind of, I don't know, something. And, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. The accent and, was good. And me and my, my mom and dad weren't, weren't together in the, uh, during the set. So yeah, it was also kind of like what was in the movie when, cause, uh, J.R. Moringer's mom and dad were separated, so. Right, yes, that's a good point. Yeah, and so that you were kind of using that emotion to kind of play the character, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you mentioned earlier that your first day on set, you were quite nervous, um, which is, you know, to be expected. I mean, of course, anyone would be nervous, but I'm curious what, how do you deal with nerves when you're meeting famous actors and filmmakers, particularly when you're shooting, you're under all this pressure, the lights are on, the camera's on. How do you deal with nerves? You gotta just pretend like it's your, it's your friends or it's your family. And there's pretend like there's no cameras, there's no lights and don't look directly at the camera because then you'll get nervous because you know there's a camera there. So you just have to pretend like it's a real conversation don't look at the camera or else you get nervous and pretend like nothing's there. It's just you and the actor and pretend like the actor is just a normal person. Yeah, that's really good advice. Because, I mean, <laughs> I would be very nervous if it was me and I'm, you know, way, way, way older than you are. Um, similar question. The film was done, a, uh, shot a while ago. Then, of course, it takes a while in post-production. And then, of course, it comes out and then the actors and the crew do uh, media and you're on red carpets and you're doing photo shoots and you're talking to people like me about the film. What's that like? Do you find that bizarre, interesting? What's your thoughts on dealing with media and publicizing your film? I really liked it. And I felt like it was very interesting seeing like what they do on the red carpet. There's like a hundred cameras. There, uh, there's also interviewers. And it's also like kind of like Sometimes in the tender bar in Los Angeles, the premiere, it was a small little red carpet area. And they had like a hundred cameras and like 10 interviewing people. 
I was yeah. just crazy. It's crazy how much it like it goes into a movie. It's crazy. I know, right? It is insane the amount of cameras that you see on a red carpet. I yeah, I'll never get used to that as well. Um, so my final question, Daniel, is now that you've been in a big film and you know people are starting to recognize who you are, what's next for you? Have you got any roles coming up? Or are you still thinking about what you're going to do next? Yes, I've uh, got a couple roles coming up. I'm hoping I get them because I want to uh, extend my career of acting and I want to actually film more um, movies because the first movie, The Tender Bar, it was very fun on the set. So I want more of that. And I want to um, interact with like actors and I want to film more, even though some people get a, very nervous. I first, for the first time I ever filmed, I was nervous, but now I'm not. I want to do it wet, like a hundred times. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I hope to see more of you. I think in 10, 15 years, we'll look back on this interview and say, I remember interviewing Daniel when he was just a little kid. Good luck for the future. Congratulations on a fantastic performance in the Tender Bar. And, and finally, thank you for your time today. Thank you, Robert. I'm Rob Lacuri, a senior editor at Gold Derby, here with Jude Hill, who plays Buddy in Belfast. Jude, this was your first role in a feature film. Um, you're still so young, so I can imagine, you know, it, it was just a thrill for you to get the role, but I'd love to, for you to talk us through how you landed this role as a young Kenneth Branagh. Well, initially I sent through a self tip because I do speech and drama lessons every single Wednesday and I've been doing them for years now and every month or so a self tip comes through and with this month it was Belfast. So, um, I sent through a self tape and then I got accepted to do a callback. And I did about five or six callbacks after that. And the last two callbacks were actually with Sir Kenneth Branagh himself in real life. And I was quite nervous before meeting him, to be honest, but he makes you feel so chill and he's really down to earth, really nice person. Like that's an amazing story in itself, similar to, you know, a lot of other young actors I've spoken to. Your first major role and you land a role in a film like this, so high profile. What, how did you feel when you actually were told, yeah, I've, you've got the role, you're going to play, buddy? Well, uh, I remember one day, it was this normal school day, nothing special was happening. I woke up and an email came through and my mom showed me it. And I read the first sentence and then I ran around my house screaming for about five minutes. And then I calmed down and went and with that came the list of actors that would also be starring in Belfast and the script. And the first time I laid eyes upon the script, it was just a beautiful script because I love analyzing scripts and just working them all out. And this script was just so special. And for a place that's very near where I live, it was just amazing. Yeah, it, it is kind of close to home, isn't it? Like, obviously, you're, you're from Belfast, I think that's correct. Just, um, uh, I'm about 40 minutes. Yeah, a little bit outside, that's right. It's like not exactly in the centre. And so what, what was your family's reaction? I mean, was your mum in tears? Like, she must have been so happy for you. Well, my mum and my dad are very, very supportive of me. And yeah, every single time we watch the film, we both cry, even though we've seen it like maybe five times now, and we both cry our eyes out. And yeah, my mum and dad are very, very supportive and I couldn't make it here without them. Yeah, that's so cool. And I, as a parent, if, if I heard my son say that, I'd probably be crying right now. Uh, it's such a wonderful thing to have your kids do so well and be so happy in what they're doing. Um, did you ever expect, and did your parents ever expect this film to become such a massive popular success with critics and audiences? Because people just love it, don't they? Uh -huh. Well, my mum and dad knew every single actor and they knew sort of what the story was about. So they were just amazed. And yeah, we got straight in to the script, analyzed it, and we'd broken down all the characters. And yeah, they're very supportive. That's good. So not only are you uh, in a film written, directed by 
So Kenneth Branagh, who I, I've met him, he's he's just a lovely man. He's so talented. It's it stars like four lots of great actors, but the four main cast. I mean, like Katrina Balfe, she's a superstar. So is Jamie Dornan, and then you've got Kieran Hines and Dame Judi Dench. Like, were you pinching yourself when you first got to set and you're seeing these legends and icons? Well, the first time I met them, they were all sitting around a table and as soon as I walked into the room, something clicked and they're all really, really nice people and they're my best buddies at this point and they're really just nice down-to-earth people and, yeah, making a film is a team effort and we couldn't have done it without them. Yeah, that's a really good attitude to have, you know. Um, I... I was just thinking, actually, you just got nominated not long ago for a British Independent Film Award for Breakthrough Performance, so congratulations on that. You must have been very excited. I am very excited. That's like the first nomination, and you'll probably get lots more uh, as you as you grow in this industry. Thank you. Um, so what does it mean to you that your performance is receiving uh, nominations and you're getting all this positive attention, the critics are really impressed with you? Do you ever read that kind of um, like reaction to your work or do you stay away from it? Well, I personally stay away from it just so... It's not really an ego boost or I get too big headed. I, my mom and dad um, all look at that stuff and they run all my social media platforms. And yeah, I don't really look too deep into it because I'm just really happy that everyone's loving the film. And I think Kenneth Branner really deserves it since he put his blood, sweat and tears into making this. He really did. You know, um, uh, Kenneth Branner has made some wonderful films over the last few decades and I think this is the film that we'll probably most remember him for and I hope everybody gets to see it because it's so it's just such a feel-good film um I remember when I was watching it I was like yes go to Sydney you should definitely go to Sydney as a family it's a great place to live <laughs> so <laughs> um I you know there are parts of the film that are quite challenging uh and uh they're slightly stressful. There's a bit of violence in the film, obviously, because this depicts the troubles in, in Belfast in the 1960s and 70s. Um, what was the most challenging or difficult film for you personally to get right that you found quite difficult to do? I got to say, one of the most hardest scenes was probably the scene where Buddy breaks down and yells, I don't want to leave Belfast. And Initially um, in the script, it was just off the bat, Buddy starts screaming and yelling, but Jimmy Dornan and Katrina Balfe did a bit of improvisation and just about the house and stuff. And they're amazing improvisers, amazing actors. And I couldn't have done that scene without them. They really, really helped. Yeah, that, that was such a great scene. Um, yeah, that made us, <laughs> I think we were tearing up then too. Um, I'd like to talk about each of the four main uh, cast members that you worked with. Um, so Kieran Hines plays Buddy's grandfather. I found your connection with him and Buddy's connection with his grandfather really touching. Um, that's probably what hit me the hardest. Um, what was your favourite thing about working with Kieran? Kieran is just the nicest man you will ever meet on this earth. He's just so kind-hearted and... He's a really, really nice man, also quite funny at times on set, and he plays pop so well, and it was like the role was just meant for him. Did he do any, like, was he a prankster on set, or did he ever crack jokes and stuff like that? I gotta say, Judy Dench was probably the prankster on set. Every single second, um, you were baited into an inappropriate joke, and she was, honestly, having Judy Dench as my grandma was just a dream come true and I didn't believe it once I read it on the email that she would be playing my grandma and that's just mind-blowing and she's very very funny and she's a really really nice woman as well she's great at what she does oh she is you know a lot of people probably wouldn't believe you they'd be like no Judy Dane Judy Dent she's a serious actress like she's you know she would never crack jokes, but from what I'm hearing, she was probably a real riot to have on set. Like, is there an example of something really silly or funny that she did? Uh, I gotta say, it was in one of the scenes with, um, I think this actually, yeah, it made it into the film, 
where uh, Buddy and Pop are having a chat about Buddy's crush, Catherine, and Judy Dench is in the background, and she was just supposed to be there saying nothing, but she cracks out and says, woman can beat your head in too, mister. And uh, that made everyone on set crack up, and she's just a really, really funny woman. That is so good. I love that. What about Jamie Dornan? Um, he plays your dad on the film. Um, what was he like to work with? What was the best thing about working with him? I think, uh, yeah, I do slag him off a little bit. It's, <laughs> yeah, just I take the hand out of him sometimes and just sort of make fun of him. But that's how people from Northern Ireland sort of show love to each other. And, yeah, me and Jamie Dornan, best friends, although we both do slag each other off a little bit. But he's a really great actor and he played Pat wonderfully. Oh, he is. I just, I love everything Jamie Dornan does. He's a fellow Northern Islander like you. And it's important that you slay each other off. Australians are like that too. We are like, you'll probably, I, I, I will say something really mean to my best friend, but we know that we love each other. Like that's how we talk. And I think that's what you're yeah. saying, right? You and Jamie can have that repartee, but you're still good buddies. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Yeah, I like that. And then finally with Katrina Balfe, um, she plays your ma. Obviously uh, a young boy's connection with his ma is super important. And this film goes to show how um, Kenneth Branagh's connection with his ma growing up, how critical it was to him growing up. What was it like working with Katrina? Katrina Balfe is just amazing. That's the only word for her. She was the best like on-screen mum that you could ever have. She played the role wonderfully. And I think Ma and Buddy's connection as a uh, mum and son, is very uh, iffy at times, but you know that deep down they love each other. Absolutely. And we got that through and through in this film. Um, my final question, Jude, is, you know, now that you've, you've been in this huge movie as your debut in a feature, do you have much else coming up? Are you thinking about what you want to do next? Do you want to you know, just keep working really hard as an actor? Is that something that you want to do now for the next few years? Well, since Belfast, I've actually done two productions. And one of them is Mandrake, directed by Lynn Davidson. And in Mandrake, I was the son of the main protagonist. And working on that was a thrill because it's sort of a horror, like, killer film and it was quite scary at times on set but the other actors were really really nice behind the mask and I've also done um, a short series called Magpie Murders and it's releasing soon actually and um, I play the victim of one of the murders and I want to say it was pretty cold that day because I had to drown in a lake it was pretty cold but I had so much fun with the other actors on set. That sounds like fun, you know. I think that's cool, you know. Yeah, okay, you had to be murdered, but that's all right because it's just acting and you got to drown in the lake. And no, who gets to say that, you know? <laughs> that's so cool, man. You know what? I really loved your performance in this film. I think this is probably one of my favourite films of the year and I really just want to congratulate you, the whole cast, and I thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. It means a lot. I'm Rob LaCuria, Senior Editor of Gold Derby, here with Gregory Diaz IV, who plays Sonny in In the Heights. First of all, Gregory, you are already quite a seasoned performer. You're so young and yet you've, you've accomplished so much already, which is just so admirable. Um, triple threat, actor, senior dancer. What is your number one passion out of those three? Uh, well, first of all, thank you very much. Um, and that being said, I, I don't think I could really choose one i enjoy all three of them pretty equally um i mean that's why you know being a part of a project like in the heights was so amazing not only because it's an amazing story and it's so culturally rich but because it was just three passions that i really loved and i got to do it just mashed up together that's that's really why i love musicals especially on screen musicals um yeah it was it was really a blessing do you think that you'll probably um, keep gravitating towards musicals on film or otherwise, maybe on stage, as your career progresses? Because it's something that you can really use all three of those amazing talents. Um, 
you know, I, I definitely want to do more than just musicals. Um, I think any actor you ask would really like to have a diverse repertoire of anything that they've done. Um, I do love musicals. I just think maybe the next one, it has to be like a pretty big one. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point. Something so, even bigger I, than In the Heights. I don't know. Something Is that even possible? I don't know. But yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe. Now, I know you've spoken about this at length with other media <laughs> outlets, but just in case people were, haven't heard this story, um, you get a role in this film. You know, it's a, it's a Lin-Manuel Miranda production, so to speak, it's directed by John Chu. This is huge. How did you get this role? Um, wow, I, I probably had my first audition way back in, I want to say like the ending of 2018. Um, so at that point, I was probably like 13. Um, that was my first audition. And then I, I had a couple callbacks. Um, those were like the beginning of 2019. Um, I remember my very last like callback slash chemistry testing was um, all the producers were in the room. John Chu was in the room. Lynn was in the room. And then I was reading with Anthony Ramos, um, which was a pretty nervous experience. Um, I look up to a lot of people in that room. I was and continue to be a huge fan of Hamilton. So just like looking at Anthony Ramos and Lynn manuel was kind of like, what's going on right now? Um, I really had to like keep it condensed and be like, yes, I'm here to, I'm here to work. Um, but um, I mean, I ended up getting the call, I think. Well, my dad actually got the call that I was, you know, I got the part of Sonny, but um, they didn't tell me until like a little bit later on because Lynn wanted to FaceTime me himself to like, let me know. Um <laughs> So they were pretty much like telling my dad to keep it on the down low and just like give Lynn my number. Um, and I think I had like just left the dentist or something and I'm in the car and I get this random FaceTime. Most of the time I'll decline it. But my dad was like, no, you shouldn't answer it. And I was like, all right, whatever. And then just like in pops Lynn manuel Miranda and like are the background are all his Tonys and awards and stuff. And you're, you're just like, oh my God, like what's going on? Um, I never once had thought in that moment that I was given the role. I just thought I was getting a random call from Lynn my mom, Miranda, because why wouldn't that happen? Um, but, you know, he eventually, he offered me the role. He asked if I wanted to be a part of this project and I accepted. I mean, who wouldn't? And just thinking back on it now is it's, I was very excited, but nervous. I was feeling all the emotions. I, yeah, I just can I, I need to just underline this for people. Like, you're a young guy. You're getting a phone call from someone you look up to, someone so famous and so acclaimed, and you're getting a role in his next film. That blows my mind. And that is such a great thing for you to carry with you forever, you know? Like, that's an amazing story. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, of um, so... That's your first ma major role, right? And but you you did make your Broadway debut in 2016 uh, in the Tony Award winning Matilda. Um, so what was more nerve wracking, being in a Broadway musical or being in a big Hollywood movie? Um, you know they both have things to be a bit nervous about. Uh, you know, with Broadway, it's a uh, you get more than one opportunity. You do the same show eight times a week, but you really want to give the best show you can every time you're going on. With something like, you know, film and TV, you do get those other takes to try and do it again, but it's not as many times as you will on Broadway. And really, they just want to get that one take and move on to the next scene. But I would have to say In the Heights, mostly just because it was such a star-studded cast and coming into the project was just like, oh my God, what's happening? And like, I look up to so many of these people. Um, but other than being nervous, I was, I was really just excited to get to work with them. Yeah. Did you have a favorite musical number in the film? Definitely. Uh, I would say 96,000. Um, yeah. 
I mean, the energy was just so high on set for those three days. We had 500 plus extras, most of them from Washington Heights themselves. So mm-hmm. there was just like, that energy was really, really authentic. And you could very obviously see that on screen. So I didn't realize it was it was such a big number in terms of the extras. And they're all locals from Washington Heights, you know, for people who don't know, that's in you know the northern side of Manhattan. Um, wow. And so what, so what was the feeling like? These are all these people and you're celebrating this culture that, you know, many of us don't get to see enough of, to be quite honest. What was that energy like? Were you just pinching yourself? Were you just having the best time of your life? I mean, honestly, yeah, it, it really... It never once felt like work to me. It just felt like I was showing up to like summer camp with friends pretty much. And like, they just so happened to be recording what we were doing. Um, (laughs) And we spontaneously break into dance and song. Uh, But other than that, it was, you know, like you said, just being surrounded by so many amazing people. This was really my first experience where everywhere I looked, there was pretty much a Latinx person, uh, whether it was the cast or the crew or the caterers, the dancers. It was, it was really an amazing opportunity to have in, I think, such a great point in my career. And I think it's really good really was a turning point. And I look forward to, you know, hopefully being able to do more projects like that. Absolutely. And, you know, eventually when you're much older and more experienced, you may have may able to shepherd your own productions where you can bring in people of your own from, from your own culture, your background. Speaking of that, I think we've come a long way in diversity and representation. I think you, you probably agree with that. But for Latinx culture, I think we have a far more to go. I really do. And, uh, and that's why watching something like In the Heights, me, I'm not American. And so it was a really great way for me to immerse myself in a culture that I'm not that familiar with, to be honest. Um, how do you feel about that, bringing Latinx culture? We need to see more of it, don't we, in film and TV? Yeah, I, I'm really happy to hear you say that because that's exactly my thinking. You know, it's, it's, it's great to see more representation that's happening not only with the Latinx community, but so many communities and cultures, but there's still more work that needs to be done. We're not finished yet. You know, I I think a project like In the Heights, I remember Lin-Manuel Miranda said something like, this isn't just, we're not just creaking the door open and peeking through. We're really just kicking it down and coming straight at you. And I think the time that even the film rolled out at, we were really in the US rolling out of the pandemic. And it was kind of this idea, you know, to get back and celebrate and feel and just enjoy one another once once more. Um, But I I really think, you know, the Latinx representation, we have to continue to see more. And In the Heights, I think, is really going to be that forerunner film that's going to go down in history as something that helped initiate that. Yeah, I think it's really kind of set the bar for that kind of... uh, cultural representation for the whole Latinx community because this Latinx community it's not a monolithic thing you know it's made up of so many different cultures from Latin America South America Central America and so forth so yeah it was a real great eye and you're right you, you guys did this film quite a long time ago the pandemic has slowed a lot of stuff down when it finally came out it was just at the right time we were all ready to just start getting together and celebrating again I think that's why this film has really hit home and, and that's why it was such an emotional experience for me and others to see. Do you feel that, did you get that kind of reaction from people when you've heard reactions about the film? Yeah, it was really amazing, like you said, to just hear people that they themselves are not Latin or have never really had an experience with Latin culture or Spanish culture, but were able to connect to it so deeply. And I think that's because the film itself is so universal. It has so many universal themes. Um, that just really grab you like from the shoulders and just pull you in straight into the film. And I think the film itself is a very immersive experience because of those universal themes. Totally agree. My final question is obviously now you've had this big breakthrough, you've done some great work already in your um, relatively short career. What's next for you? What do you want to do more of or what, what, what are you planning on doing next? Um, well, of course, I'm still a student, so I have, you know, school going on, 
but um, I'm auditioning. I am attached to a few projects. I would love, you know, like um, my fellow members that were just here, I am a very big Marvel fan. Um, I'd love to one day just get the opportunity to, I don't know, maybe play a little Marvel superhero. I do have some ideas in mind, Marvel, if you're watching, I don't know, but <laughs> yeah, so just continue to watch out. Okay, oh, I will. And so Kevin Foggy, if you're watching this, I think you need to give Gregory Diaz the fourth people a call because we'd like to see him in space for the Marvel MCU. <laughs> um, on that note, good luck, mate. I, I've just loved your performance in this film. I loved this film. It made me so happy and it's just what I needed after such a challenging year. Thank, Thank you for your time today and good luck this awards season. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure, Robert. I'm Rob LaCuria, Senior Editor at Gold Derby. Welcome to our Gold Derby Breakthrough Performers Panel. And I'm here with Jude Hill, who stars as Buddy in Belfast. Gregory Diaz IV, who plays Sonny in In the Heights. And Daniel Ranieri, who plays young JR in The Tender Bar. Guys, thanks so much for joining me today. This is going to be really fun group chat. My first question, which I'm going to direct to Gregory, is... So, you know, you're still up and coming in this industry and what has been the best advice you've been given about working as an actor so far? Um, I would definitely have to say while I was filming In the Heights, um, one of my co-stars, Stephanie Beatrice, um, we were just kind of sitting next to each other. We had just finished filming a scene and she just said, really soak this all in and really allow it allow yourself to absorb this environment because it was truly a once in a lifetime experience to be surrounded by so many Latinx people, both on a screen and off the screen. And I've, I've really just kept that with me as I've continued to grow in my career. That's a really good answer because, you know, you're doing what you love to do and you've got to soak it in every day and just really like make the most of it while you're doing it. Um, what about you, Daniel? What's the best advice that you've been given so far in your very young career? The best advice that I've been given was when I was filming the set, um, one time me and George were just sitting next to each other and he told me, uh, when you're filming a scene, act like it's a real conversation, like you're talking in a real conversation, like with your parents or your friends. Don't like pretend like you're acting, like make it a real conversation. Yeah, that's a good one. Make it feel real, make it feel authentic. Um, that's excellent advice. Really good, good job, George. Uh, finally, Jude, what's the best advice you've been given so far? I think the best advice that was given to me by Kenneth Browner, the person who directs Belfast, is probably just you have to know the character before you perform the character and you have to know what they would do in the situation and what they're like. And as long as you understand the character, then you can act it beautifully. Yeah, good point. You need to be prepared. You need to be in the character's head, understand who they are. Good advice. Now I'm going to flip the, flip the switch a bit. So I'm going to stick with you, Jude. And I'm just wondering, I know a lot of young people, uh, boys and girls who really, really want to get into film industry. I know, for example, my own son, he's 11 and he, you know, does musical theatre classes and drama all weekend. And, you know, he does plays and he would love to, um, you know, know what, what is your advice? But what's the best way to get into acting and get into this kind of industry? What do you think, Jude? Well, I think that you just got to love acting and you got to love what you're doing. And if a self tip ever comes through, you have to love it and enjoy it. And don't be too serious at all times. Have some fun with it as well as hard work. And yeah, that'll get you far. Okay. I like it. I like that. What about you, Daniel? Um, you could probably, when you're filming a scene, or when you're, if you get a scene or um, a script sent to you, you have to really understand the character and how the, what the character's emotions are and how the character is acting and feeling. Because other than if you don't know what the character's emotions are, you're never going to like be good in the part. Or you're never going to get the part. Yeah, good point. You do need to, you just need to, you, you can't fake it you got to actually try to figure out what the hell this character's doing. 
I like that. Finally, Gregory, what's your advice? You're a bit more experienced than the other two actors on this panel, and you've done, you know, Broadway and all other kinds of things. How did you get into this industry? What would you tell young actors who want to be like, just like you? Um, I would say, you know, of course, you really want to do it for yourself. And that being said, just stay really persistent. Um, if it's your dream, something that you want, you know, you're doing it for you. Go at it head first and don't give up. And just, you know, be yourself. There, there's only one you out there. And don't be afraid to ask questions because how else are we going to learn unless we're asking questions? Yeah, you know what? I'd say that to a lot of young people in any industry. Like, don't be too timid. Don't sit back and just wait. Go for something. Ask questions. Be proactive. I like that. That's very good advice. Thank you all of you for that because I think young people watching this today will probably really want to cotton on to that and try to follow your lead. Um, let's move on to something a bit more practical. Um, obviously, you're all young and you're all still in school or in, in some way, shape or form. I'm curious, Gregory, um, is it difficult juggling school, regular life with your family and friends, being on set, rehearsals, pre-production? Talk us through that challenge. Yeah, um, it can definitely be a bit difficult at times. I'm a, a junior in high school right now. So, you know, I'm approaching that kind of more studious phase of, uh, you know, college and all that stuff. But you just kind of have to find a good balance or, you know, at least attempt to find that good balance between school and when you have to pr prioritize that, but also, you know, prioritizing your own happiness and, and when you have your free time. Yeah, in fact, I'll stick with you, Gregory. Do you find that sometimes you have to say no to stuff or you have to miss out on things because you're so busy on, on set or on stage? Um, sometimes, yes. And, and that kind of relates to the whole prioritizing thing. Um, you know, of course, it's always great to hang out with friends and stuff like that. But sometimes you just, you know, you may not be in the mood, one or two. You just have other things to do. You have to read a script. You have to get some schoolwork done. Because, um, I mean, at the end of the day, those are the two really important things, work and school. Um, and when you have that free time, it's always great to, you know, finally get out of the house. <laughs> I know, because, like, you're still kids. Like, you probably just want to chill out or play video games or go and play football or go and, you know, just hang out at a cafe. Um, and I imagine it would be really stressful. I also imagine it would probably be really helpful to have a really strong family unit around you, supporting you and friends. Do you feel that way, Daniel? What's the what's the challenge, especially given how young you are, to, to balance school and family and also working as an actor? It is pretty difficult because sometimes I gotta do my homework, I gotta do something for school. And if I get sent a script that has to be done on the weekdays, I'm in school. And if it's done at like five o'clock or something, I get it at school at 220. So I only have like an couple hours to study the script and know it very well and then record it and send it to the people <laughs> and it, yeah. it's hard because sometimes I miss out on my homework I my homework goes in it's incomplete because I'm trying to actually build on my career I'm being an actor so I would rather kind of do the script than miss out like on a little homework yeah, exactly. That's what Gregory was saying. It's all about priorities, right? What's more important in the day? You don't want to miss school, of course, but you're given an opportunity to, to get a script read and, and maybe audition or read for the casting director. You know, that's important too. Um, Daniel, do you find that it's important to, to rely on your family and your, you know, and just so that you're getting through all the different priorities? Yes, it is great that you could play with your family. Uh not play, hang out with your family and spend some time with your family and have like dinners and you could, um, it is hard when you're filming, when you're trying to get a script done, but if you hang out with your family and you're juggling school, so it is very difficult. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it would be. It's difficult for regular kids who don't have this extra thing in their lives. So I can imagine it'd be way more difficult for you guys. Do you feel the same way, Jude? Are you finding it hard to, and challenging to balance everything? Well, on the set of Belfast, it was mostly across summer, meaning that um, I didn't have to do tutoring or any schoolwork for a large part of it. 
but some of it was in September, meaning that I had to do some tutoring on set. And so basically I had a bunch of work from my school that they'd given to me before I went over to London to film Belfast. And all I had to do was get all that work done. And I still stayed in contact with my school friends. And I think that's also very, very important because you're still just a kid and yeah, you just live your life. That's right. You're, I mean, obviously you're working hard to be an actor in, in your career, but you are still a kid and you're just still a regular person and you want to hang out with your friends. And I think that's really important. I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, so look, I have this well, favourite question that I love to ask whenever I do these panels with all kinds of people, directors and composers and actors. I love to know what their favourite films are and their favourite performer or actor something that's inspired them you know like we all had that when we were growing up I love this film or even as an adult I, I have some films that I've watched over and over again right they inspire me so I'd love to hear from you guys what do you think I'm, I'm going to go to you first Gregory what is your favorite film or favorite actor someone or something that has inspired you and why um I would say one of my favorite films is Toy Story um I mean it's just Toy Story. The first one. The first one is really great. Um, but I also, I really enjoy La La Land, you know, coming from that musical theater background and, and that mesh between dance and song, but also, you know, on screen. I really enjoy the musicality of it. Actor-wise, um, I'm a really big fan of actors like Andrew Garfield and um, uh, Joaquin Phoenix, who, you know, he himself is Puerto Rican, so that's really inspiring to me. Um, he had an amazing performance in something like Joker. I don't know if you guys have seen that. It's a little bit darker. Maybe you shouldn't have. Um, but yeah, and, and like inspiration wise, I, I think really, you know, of course I take inspiration from those people that I look up to, but it, it's mostly just, I've been very fortunate in my career to be surrounded by a lot of really amazing people and just, kind of taking that with me and, and helping it to inspire myself. You know, this is really my dream and something that I really want. And having that amazing support system from friends and family has really helped along the way. Yeah, that's a really great answer. We all have people that we look up to um, and we all have our, you know, actor heroes. Um, I certainly do. I'm curious, Daniel, who are your, what's your, who's your favorite actor? and What's your favorite film and why? My favorite films are probably Marvel and yep. uh, Star Wars because they have a lot of action and I like when they have a lot of action. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my favorite, some of my favorite actors are, like Gregory said, Joaquin Phoenix, um, people that play like Chris Evans, Chris Hemsworth, Ben Affleck. I, I get inspired by them. And I feel like with Joaquin Phoenix, when he, in his films, he gets so into the character that sometimes like if his character is like mean, like the Joker, he gets mean in real life. But then after the set, he's not mean anymore. Yeah, Joaquin Phoenix is, is a legend. Like, let's be honest, I totally agree. I think I've seen Joker like 10 times. And also, Daniel, I'm glad you mentioned Marvel. People who thumb their nose up to Marvel, I, I get a little cranky because we're a Marvel household. We've seen the whole series like four times. We're currently in the middle of Ragnarok. I have two kids and that's how we all get together and sit on the couch together. So I totally hear what you're saying. Marvel is fantastic. Now, Jude, what about you? What are your favorite films or favorite film? And what's your, who's your favorite actor and why? Well, I'm a massive fan of the Marvel universe as well. And I've easily watched every single film at least eight times. Yes. And my favorite film is probably Avengers Endgame just because it had so many different plot twists and it was really well made. And I got to say, the actors that I sort of look up to are Tom Hiddleston and Robert Downey Jr. Because Robert Downey Jr. just plays the role Iron Man with such ease and he has a little bit of fun with it too. And that's very important. And he does an amazing job of playing him. Yeah, I agree. I totally love them. I think Tom Hiddleston's awesome as well. And um, I think Infinity War was better than Endgame, but that's okay. You can still love Endgame. And, and, and as Gregory mentioned, La La Land is such an awesome film. Um, oh, how many times have we watched that? We listened to that in the car, the beautiful soundtrack. 
um, by Benj Massey. Um, okay, so thank you very much for those answers, guys. That was really interesting. Um, and I want to thank you for your time today. This has been a really interesting panel. Congratulations on your wonderful work and good luck this award season.